Welcome to Black Belt Beauty Radio, a podcast fueled by a passion to support your journey in developing your most beautiful and optimal performance in life. Each episode is driven with the intention to elevate your mind. When we elevate our mind, we elevate our life. So get ready. It's time to rise. Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of Black Belt Beauty Radio. I'm so excited to get down on this solo episode for you guys today. I want to just bring you into some of my personal uh, recent experiences. Um, I went to see one of my favorite bands, Duran Duran. So this was the fourth time for me uh, seeing them in show. I have loved this band literally since I was six years old. Could have been before that, but that's as far back as I can remember. Um, and I've seen them four times. This time was super special. It was on Halloween. Very, it was a very intimate setting. I was at the Encore Theater in here in Vegas, um, which is a very small theater. And because it was Halloween, they were dressed up and it was just so much fun. Um, you know, aside from just wanting to just share parts of my life and connect with you in that way, uh, there is something deeper about this experience that you know, I gave to myself that I want to share with you. I want to tease out the deeper parts of it because I I believe that this will be supportive to you or at the very least be fun for you to take in. So I put up an Instagram post around my night with Duran Duran. I rocked a hot fuchsia bob wig and I fucking love it. And I probably should have worn it, but I'm I'm rocking my my wild hair for this one. Um, but I will. I will put on the wig soon. Surprise you. Um, but so in this Instagram post, I'm going to read you the caption because it's going to set the the tone and the framework for this episode, you know, why I really want to share this with you. So the caption says, a night with my love for Duran Duran, but... This post was created for all my girls here who feel your heart calling you towards an experience, but you find yourself overthinking on going for it. And by the way, you know, I know that not just women listen to the podcast. So this is definitely not just for the women in my community. It's for all of you, all of you who feel your heart calling you to do something, um, to go for something. But I'm going to carry on with this um, caption now. But, you know, you're overthinking it. I'm inviting you to live your heart's directive and to go for it. Don't wait for the perfect conditions. You are the perfect condition when you trust your decisions and act from your heart map. You can't make a wrong move when it's a true move. That's such a fucking epic sentence. I'm going to come back to that one. I'm going to repeat it, though. You can't make a wrong move when it's a true move. Those are the only moves that your heart whispers to you. Listen closely. Trust it. Don't wait for someone to do it, whatever it is, with you to experience it. When you live from a true state of wholeness, independence is not only a master key to unlock all experiences that have you thriving from your authentic self, but it liberates you to move in harmony with yourself. You are never alone. You are always with yourself. Big difference. Don't wait for permission to live your fucking love out. This is no dress rehearsal. This is your unique opportunity to express your highest self, potential, heart, and soul. I'm inviting you with my entire heart to think about this. The more you say yes to what your heart is directing you towards, the more you gain the experiences that are going to encourage your ultimate magnetic and opulent expression to come alive and to give you the internal gems that have you thriving from within and out. And that's true opulence, right? 300 fucking 60 degrees of thriving. To say I had the best time taking myself on a Halloween date with Duran Duran, 38 years of loving them, is a massive understatement. It's so much deeper than that. I won't just look back at this memory with one of my favorite bands ever having the time of my life. I'll be looking back with love and pride for continually saying yes to my heart. 
then I want that for you too. So drop in and listen to her. You're worth it. All right, let's tease that the fuck out. So, okay, a couple of things. I want to bring you into my mind. So this particular weekend where, you know, Halloween was on a Monday, um, I had a family event that, you know, was taking place in Los Angeles. You know, I, I live in LA and Vegas. Um, and there were other work things. Basically, I I saw this concert coming from a, a couple months ahead of time, right? And I also knew that this family event was right before it. I also saw a lot of work stuff around it. And I was like, shit, how am I going to make this all work? And so low key in the back of my head, I start trying to figure it out, right? I mean, this is weeks ahead of time. You know, am I going to drive? Am I going to fly? Am I going to, do I move this? Am I going to not go there? And so without taking you through that entire process, I'll just keep it simple and say that, you know, I found myself in overdrive in terms of thinking about this. And um, as I got closer to the actual weekend, the date, uh, <laughs> you know, then the overdrive went to like double overdrive and I was really overthinking it. You know, and I say it's overthinking, you know, you could, you could definitely look at it and go, oh no, I was just trying to figure it out. But honestly, it was overthinking, and I'll, I'll explain why. Because what I always talk about, like your heart, I mean, it's in here, right? Your heart's directive. Your heart, there are no shoulds that live in the heart. The heart says yes, the heart says no. We put the should in the situation, right? Should I, shouldn't I, right? And, or I should do this, you know, et cetera. Um, and that results in just a lot of overthinking. And it also results in just mental fatigue. It's it's so exhausting. It's it's like, I call it like an energy leak. And I understand that not all decisions are going to be as easy as turning on a light switch, right? On, off. Yes, no, right? I, I understand that there are some times um, where you really do have to kind of weigh things out, right? And in this case for me, I mean, there was certainly that, you know, I've got a family thing. I've got this concert. Now, listen, Duran Duran, they're one of my fucking favorite bands, as mentioned in this caption. I've seen them already three times. I had just missed them because they were here in Vegas, you know, a month or so ago. Uh, but I was in LA, so I missed them. And it's one of these bands where it's like, you don't know if they're going to come back after this, right? I mean, they're not getting younger. None of us necessarily are. But, you know, it's that situation where it's like, because music is my first love. You know, if you're my Instagram community, you know, if you go through my all of my posts on my wall, it's a fucking playlist, right? Or if you watch one of my stories, why is there always music? Because music is my first love. Then came writing, right? So I take my music fucking serious. Okay. Um, so you know, for me, it wasn't just like, oh, a concert. Well, you know, it's like, no, what if they never come back? You know, and even beyond that, without being so dramatic about it, um, even though that's not really dramatic, that's a reality. Um, I was like, I really want to go. I fucking want to, like, I could see myself there just having the time of my life. Like there's no not having the best time going to see one of your favorite bands, right? That was very clear to me. So literally it was, you know, it was, uh, it was a Thursday where I'm on my morning walk and after meditation, conversation with my muse, highest self, future self, soulmate, ride or die. For those of you who are not yet familiar with who my highest self, my ride or die, my muse is, um, you'll definitely, you know, get to know more of this about me because I talk about her frequently in our relationship. I've built a digital course around, you know, embodying, connecting with this highest frequency of you, but we'll save that for another time. Um, but in meditation, I, I have conversations with her and she literally gave me the directive of do what your heart is expanding you towards, right? So, you know, um, in that moment, I just, you know, this is something that could be really useful too. When you are in a situation where you need to make a decision, your body speaks to you. If you feel closed in any which way, it could be the most subtle. And this is why it's so powerful to get into a really strong relationship with your body because it's, it's going, it's here to support you, obviously. But on this particular, in this particular way as well, right? Where 
you know, when you feel yourself expanded, like opening at the thought of doing something, that's a fuck yes, right? But if there's any kind of closing, if you feel constricted in any way, that's a no, you know? And so for me, I get the message from my muse, hey, go where your heart is expanding you towards. Like, just do the thing, right? And that just felt like a fuck yes to me. So I go on my walk and um, I just, I, I made it all happen. I was like, fuck it. You know what? I'm just going to fly home, see the family for a weekend, bought that ticket, and I'm going to go see my favorite band, bought that ticket. And it happened that fast. So, you know, all of this thinking, 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 weeks ahead of time that started super low key because I knew I had time to figure it out. And then it really ramped up as we got closer to the date. It was almost like a waste, really. It's a waste. And something that's so important to me um, and something that I identify with it, within my, my future self, my muse, that I love, that I respect so much is how I feel like this is a woman who's made powerful decisions. So I don't really subscribe to good or bad. Um, I am someone who really just focuses on, is it empowering or is it disempowering, right? Um, is it powerful or lack thereof, right? And so when I, when I see um, my muse, you know, she, this is a woman who embodies that you just know she is a fucking powerful woman and not powerful because her physique or because she's powerful because you can tell that she's whole, that, that, that she's got this, um, intellect and intuition, her intuition and her intellect are really in harmony with each other. And that to me is the ultimate, you know, driving force to make powerful decisions, right? When your intellectual, when your intuition and your intellect can come in and fucking make things happen for you. So anyways, back to making the decision, it was, it, you know, it felt so good. And that's another thing. Like when you make a decision, you you know right away, like if, you, if it feels really fucking good, that's a really good sign that, yep, that's exactly the direction that you know, is best for you to move in. And I felt that immediately when, when um, you know, buy my tickets. And so I fly home and I, I see my family had the best time, you know, home on the beach and then um, fly home on Halloween back to Vegas. And it was so much fun. It was so much fun also because everything, again, it's like, I know that I'm moving in harmony with my heart's directive. I'm moving from a place of, real desire and real, you know, it's, 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 it's not me being just overthinking about anything. It's me being so rooted in what my heart is directing me towards. Right. And that just feels fucking epic. You know, it's an excellent feeling, which is why I speak about it so much. Right. And, um, and, you know, like in the caption where I say, um, you know, the more that you say yes to your heart, directing you, whatever your heart's directing you towards, the more that you gain experiences that encourage your ultimate magnetic and opulent expression, right? So in some situations, I'm not saying that the heart's going to direct you to, it's just always the easy path. Let me be clear on that. No, sometimes the heart is going to direct you to face a challenge, but that's exactly what you need to do for you to rise into a higher and fuller expression of yourself, right? To gain the wisdom, to gain the attributes, to fortify the attributes, whatever it is, the experience that's going to, you know, support you to express yourself at a higher frequency in life, right? So again, to be clear, the heart's direction, your heart map, the heart whispers are not always necessarily guiding you towards easy, fun. No. I mean, sometimes yes, but sometimes no. But Every time, in my opinion, it is it is the fucking way. It's the truth, right? So, man, it was so much fun. So here's something that I really, really want to dive into. So I do a lot of things with myself, not by myself, with myself. 
there's nothing wrong with by myself, but if you know me, then you know by now that I'm very particular about words. Words cast spells, words are an experience. Um, They're literally an energy, right? With myself is literally what the truth is. I'm with my capital S-E-L-F, right? And there's a big difference in that because it's me in harmony with me, with my highest self, right? So you have like, you have this physical right here, right now me, but then you have this highest me. And we all have that. I believe that we all have this highest expression of self within us, right? And, you know, the work in life is to become consciously aware of that and to, you know, create a relationship with this consciousness of yourself, the highest expression of you, right? And in, you know, my work, I frame that also as your future self, right? So that these are where the names come in, but it's all essentially you, this highest frequency of you, this higher level of consciousness um, that is also you, right? So I do a lot of things with myself. And, um, and I have to say, like, you know, look, I love doing things with my loved ones, with others, for sure. But there are just some circumstances where, you know, there's nobody to do the thing that I want to do with for whatever reason, right? Best friends of all over the world. Most of my best friends are mommies, like entrepreneurs, just whatever it is, you know? I would never, ever, ever stop myself from doing whatever it is that my heart is directing me towards because, you know, I would be having to do it with myself, right? I know that a lot of people literally will not go to the movie or go get the dinner or go to the concert or whatever um, because, you know, they're 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 going to go, you know, and, and another way to put it is alone, right? They're not going with someone. But you guys, like, man, listen, I'm not at all putting down the beautiful joyful fun that comes with going with a loved one. I'm simply saying if it comes down to having to choose between not going to something that you really want to experience, whatever that is, because, you know, nobody's there to go with you versus going, you got to fucking go. And it's so powerful to do that. I went and saw... Another one of my favorite bands, Red Hot Chili Peppers, you know, again, all time, they were one of three of the, the first concert I ever went to uh, when I was 13 years old. And they were playing here in Vegas at the Allegiant Stadium. And it was fucking incredible. And it was one of those last minute decisions, I literally bought the ticket that morning again. But, you know, I, again, one of the best decisions ever, because for me, you know, again, music is my first love. I... You know, a lot of times when I need to make a decision, this could be really supportive to you too. Um, what, a lot of times when I need to make a decision and I'm kind of weighing things out and I'm really not sure and I'm trying to listen and I'm still not getting the feeling is like, okay, future pace, look back. If you can look back and literally not be bothered by not doing the thing, then maybe it's not necessarily that important to do. But in the case of like going to see the Chili Peppers, I was, you know, thinking about, I was like, oh, fuck no. There's no way I'm not going to, you know, like if I look back and be like, oh, you know, uh, no, I would not want to miss them. And I'm sure they've, I mean, they just recorded what, two more albums or something. Like, they're going to keep going, but it's not the point, right? And the point again, around going with yourself and versus not because nobody's with you. The point is to realize that you are in a relationship with yourself and this is your one fucking life. That's why I say in the caption, this is no dress rehearsal. The more that you can actually step into these actions, these activities where these experiences, like give yourself, the more that you can step in and give yourself these experiences, regardless of, you know, anybody being with you in those moments, honestly, the more empowered you become. Because if you think about why you wouldn't, it's what, why would you not give yourself the experience because there's nobody to do it with? Right there, you're also saying to yourself that you're not recognizing this self within you. 
You're in you. Like, go, you know, give yourself the moment. Give your few, like, your heart, like, give yourself that nourishment of joy, of satisfaction, of whatever it is that you're going to gain, you know, the memory um, that your heart is directing you towards. And don't fucking wait for anybody, or even if it's just going to have dinner. You know, you want to go have dinner and, oh, but there's nobody to go with, but you really want that steak or whatever it is, you know? Um, fucking take yourself to dinner because you are with you. That was that was really, really huge for me to share, you know, in this caption, but specifically in this podcast where I can really, you know, uh, go on a tear about it because I know, I know that there are, there's a larger tendency for people to hold back and to not do the thing that they want to do because they don't have somebody to do it with, but I'm inviting you to realize that you do have somebody to fucking do it with yourself. And the more that you do these things, the more that you take action and get into these activities with yourself, the more that you're actually fortifying this powerful relationship with yourself, right? You're acknowledging that you're in you and you, you are on your team and you you and you are here doing this thing called life together in partnership. And that's fucking powerful and so much fun. One thing that I do want to talk about too is um, this piece right here. Don't wait for the perfect conditions. You are the perfect condition. When you trust your decisions and act from your heart map, You can't make a wrong move when it's a true move. And those are the only moves that your heart whispers to you. Listen closely and trust it. For sure, some pieces of that are going into my poetry book, Magnetic Feminine, that will be coming out next year. Um, You know, as a writer, I just get so much fulfillment and satisfaction from crispy little sentences like that that really drive a message home. You can't make a wrong move when it's a true move. What do I always say? Your heart is the truth. Your heart is where your intuition lives. Your heart is, you know, where you are most connected with this, you know, universal, the universe, right? Spirit, source, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, And also, you know, in more of a connection and a deeper connection with your highest self, there's never going to be a wrong move directed from this place, this, your heart, right? And again, if a challenge, if a challenge is presented, don't, do not mistake that as a wrong move. How many situations have you been in your life to this point where, you know, you had to face a challenge and wh- whether it was, you know, you wanted to do it, it didn't feel good, like all the things, looking back at it now, you're like, damn, that was so necessary for me to have gained fill in the blank whether it was an internal win, an external win, both, right? So, you know, there's no wrong move. There are only true moves that come from your heart. So it's the more that we can exercise, you know, get into this practice of listening to these directives, these true moves from our heart, the more empowered we become, the more self-actualized we become, the more our intuition is turned up the more that we build self-trust, the more that we just step into a higher expression of ourself, right? Because we are, we're in partnership with this expression of ourself that is being, you know, our coach, you know, guiding us, um, you know, through our heart, like whispering through our heart. Or in my case, you know, it's also, uh, you know, in meditation, in conversation with Roxanne, future self, my muse, the woman in the mirror. She's got all kinds of names. Um, But it's, you know, the point here being you are the perfect condition. You don't need to wait for the fucking perfect condition. You just need to learn how to listen. And you need to learn how to trust that directive, right? And again, if you have to make a decision and you're really not sure And there's a lot of things like, you know, I mean, because at the end of the day, it all comes down to loss, I think, you know, to keep it super simple. We're afraid of losing something when we have to weigh in a big decision, whether it was I'm losing the experience, I'm losing money, I'm losing the person, I'm losing whatever it is. It's like if you if you tease it out and you like take the layers off, it's like, like, why am I really why is this giving me a hard time trying to make a decision? 
it'll always come down to that. Like, I'm afraid that I will lose something. Okay. Understandable. Can you future pace? Fast forward. Look at yourself not going or doing the thing that you're feeling in here. And again, go into your body. What happens? Do you feel closed? Do you feel open? If you feel closed in that, there's a signal right there that, no, you need to do the thing. You need to face the fear. You need to, or, you know, it's not even facing the fear, or sometimes it is, but it's rather trusting yourself and trusting what you are feeling inside and just fucking going, right? Um, or, you know, if it's, you know, the opposite, then you do the opposite. If it's something that you can look back on and you're like, I don't really care that much. Well then, you know, likely what's happening in those, you know, in the decision-making process is that it's not necessarily your heart is really guiding you towards something. It's maybe more of an emotional experience where you're like, oh no, I really want to, you know, I mean, I remember this one, (laughs) I can't believe I'm breathing. This is amazing. There was this one time fucking years ago, this is my 20s, where a group of my friends were going to Buenos Aires to go see one of our big DJ friends uh, perform. And I was hell bent on fucking going. This is when I lived in New York City. And it was like a whole, our crew, right? So I just, I wanted to be there so fucking bad. And... And I was totally trying to convince myself, like, no, this is it. You know, I'd see, I remember, you know, I was flying, at the time I was flying like every couple of weeks uh, between Hawaii, LA, and New York. And I remember seeing a little clip in a newspaper where it said Buenos Aires. I was like, oh my God, it's a sign, you know? Um, But it wasn't, it wasn't for me. And this is where, when I say look back, or if you can like feature pace and then, you know, try and look back and see how you feel. That was one of the most standout moments for me or experiences to, to that that solidifies what I'm saying, like this offering, this tactic, right? Because when it got down to the point of, you know, am I going to go? Am I going to try and am I going to get scrappy and figure out a way to get there? I did that. I did exactly what I'm sharing with you. And I did the look back and I'm like, as much as I want to go, it's actually not that important to me. So I didn't go. But I love that experience because it created this tactic for me. And I've used it over and over again. And it fucking never lets me down. So I hope that that helps you. So what else do I got for you? Don't fucking wait for permission to live your love. I say it all the time. This is no fucking dress rehearsal. You know, if we've got a hundred more lives after this, cool. We'll find out when we get there. But in this 3D physical right here, right now moment of our reality, this is your one opportunity to express your unique expression. You got to fucking live your love. You, you got to, because when you choose not to, you are suppressing yourself you are becoming stagnant. You are not allowing yourself to grow the experiences, like become and experience the experiences that are going to help you become. They're going to help you to evolve in the in the way that you really want to evolve and in the way that, you know, perhaps you're meant to evolve, right? Um, most importantly, how you want to evolve. But you you can't, if you're constantly living in a state of I want to experience, but then I'm also not willing to make the moves, take the actions to trust myself, that's a very, very torturous life. Because then you're just always in the state of want, but you're never fucking executing. You're never trying. So you're never going to attain. You know, it's better to, fucking try, try, try. And, you know, if you got to face some hard shit along the way, well, you're going to gain a lot from that as well versus, you know, not try. You have to live your love. You do whatever you want, but you know, I'm always going to come on here and fucking encourage you to move from your heartbeat, to move from the whispers of your heart, to move from your authentic self, which is all of it, right? Because I don't believe that there's any fucking losing when you are living from your authentic self, when you are listening to your heart's 
directed, moving from your heart map and allowing yourself to experience your fucking life, create your life from your heart map. You know, there's no losing. You can only gain. Doesn't matter if you got to take a punch along the way, you know, and I'm never talking about the physical, right? I'm talking about like, you know, whatever, just like life battles and shit. But, you know, we, that's how, you know, we get stronger. That's how we develop ourselves in, in powerful ways. So, you know, it's a gamble. Yeah. But betting on yourself is the best fucking gamble that, you know, gambling game that you could ever play. Right. So, yeah, that was a big one. <laughs> I could go on and on, honestly, about this one. I'm so lit still just, you know, driving here, listening to fucking Duran Duran on blast. But again, you know, how I close this caption, it's not just me going to see my favorite band or one of my favorite bands. Um, it was me saying yes. Yes to something that I really wanted to experience. Um, yes to me doing whatever was necessary to make it happen. And yes to me always just fucking like saying to my heart, I trust you. We're in this together. I, you know, there's there's no, no, there's no other voice. There's no other directive. There's no book. There's no coach. There's no fucking anything outside of the voice of my heart that I trust more and that will direct me in my life, right? Doesn't mean I, I don't, I can't take advice. It doesn't mean I can't learn things. It doesn't mean any of that. No, I do all of that too, right? I am a coach for a reason. And I'm here actually to advise you, to support you, to inspire you, to motivate you, all of the above, to fucking do the same. I can sit here and share all of what I share with you, but all of it is leading you into, you know, my goal is to lead you into your most autonomous state for you to operate from your fucking authentic self because I believe that is where you're truly going to thrive in your life from within and out. The inner shapes the outer. Boom. I'm going to end it on that one. And um, yeah, I hope you love this episode. I hope that you know, it it serviced you in some high way. Um, there's tactics in here that, you know, I hope that you play back when you have to make a decision and, you know, they really support you. Let me know how this episode hit your heart. Let me know in the comments, YouTube, Instagram posts, DM me. Please share it up on your stories. Instagram, you know, it's a great way to help the content on the podcast get out more. Tag me. I'm at Roxy Look. I'm at Black Belt Beauty. I love you guys. Thank you to everybody who's just been showing up and, you know, putting the comments. Um, YouTube is so much fun. I'm getting a lot more active in there, you know, with shorts and, and all kinds of things. So yeah, just the podcast is just, it's kicking ass. And again, I just want to thank all of you because it wouldn't be kicking ass without you, right? So we are truly in this together. And another thing for me is so fun you know, that's just been coming to me lately is, you know, I come out a lot of, a lot of times and create these solo episodes with a lot of times like very specific things that maybe I want to, you know, speak about more in like the coaching, teaching aspect of things. Um, or, you know, I'll pull from an Instagram post and then tease it out. But also just really feeling, uh, there's more, I'm feeling really connected with my community. I've been feeling this like on a higher level and it's so fucking awesome. So lately I'm just feeling like, you know what? Sometimes I'm just going to come in here, going to hit record, my fucking epic producer, Scott, and I'm just going to fucking go. And we're going to talk because I truly actually feel that you're in the room with me right now and we're having a conversation. So sometimes it might just be, you know, Roxy talks. So hopefully... Um, at the very least, you will be entertained because if you watch me on Instagram, you know that I am a self-entertainer. Um, I love you guys. If you have not already given this podcast a five-star rating review, please do so. There's a very easy, like super easy link in the show notes. Wherever you listen to this podcast, you'll be able to go straight to that link. It takes two minutes and it means so much to me and my team. So lots of love. I will see you on the next one. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode, you guys. If you loved it, please share it on your social. Throw it up on your Instagram stories and tag me. I'm at Black Belt Beauty. I am also at Roxy Look, R-O-X-Y-L-O-O-K. I love connecting with you guys. This is a conversation that I want to just continue growing with you guys. So if you feel inspired, 
to hit me up, do so in that space. I always enjoy hearing from you. If you'd like to support this podcast, you can do so by rating it and reviewing it via iTunes. It's such supportive help, you guys. It really helps the visibility of this podcast. So I appreciate and thank you in advance for doing that. And on that note, you guys, I'm signing off with all my love and always looking forward to catching you on the next.